How's it going guys? My name is Nathan. I go by Ducky3D here on the internet and today I'm going to show you how to use the Grayscale Gorilla Plus materials inside of Blender. If you've never seen me before, I have a channel where I teach motion graphics using Blender and I'm super happy to be showing you how to use Plus inside of Blender. So let's get into it. All right, so we are here in the scene file and you'll have access to this file down below. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, kind of get out of my camera view and check out the assets. And these assets are populated over here through geometry nodes. So this is where we're gonna be placing our uh, model. So I'm just gonna highlight it and hit the period key just to kind of center it to my viewport. Now, before we start adding materials, we need a little bit of prep. So first we're gonna to need to head to grayscalegorilla.com and we can check out their library. Now, if you are a Grayscale Gorilla Plus member, you get access to thousands of high quality materials, lights and models, all of which you can use inside of Blender. Or if you wanna follow along, you can sign up for free and grab some of their free assets that you can check out and use in Blender. So what you wanna do is go ahead and download the assets that you want to use in your scene, go ahead and unzip those and add them into your folder structure. And you're also going to want to get the Material Importer add-on for Blender. That's going to come with your Grayscale Gorilla Plus account. So once you have signed up and you've chosen Blender, it will prompt you to download the add-on. And it's going to come as a zip file. Don't unzip that file. Blender add-ons are meant to be as these packaged zip files. So let me show you how to install that and we'll get into importing them. So what you would do here and just go to Edit preferences, and then you'll go here to the add-on section and click install. And wherever you saved your add-on right here, I saved it, it's called the Grayscale Gorilla Blender Importer, and then you'll just double click it and it should pop up once it's installed. Just click on the little check mark and then go here to save preferences so it's always going to be there. And then to double check if it's there, you'll go to file, import, and then right here on the bottom, you should see Grayscale Gorilla material. That's how you know it has imported correctly. And the next thing to know, if you're applying you know, image-based materials, you need to have models that are unwrapped. So with primitives like this, it's very, very easy to unwrap them in Blender. Now, all of these are pre-unwrapped for you that I did myself. This is a model that comes with Grayscale Gorilla Plus for free. And this one actually comes pre-unwrapped from Grayscale Gorilla. These I did myself, but if you go here to the UV editing, you can see we have all these nice UVs and then if you go to him, you can see we have our nice UVs here. But if you happen to not like the unwrap on any of these models, it's very easy to change it. You would just go click on one, hit tab, just hit A just to make sure all the faces are selected. You'll hit U, then you'll click Smart UV Project and that'll really do a really good job of unwrapping it. Or if you know your primitive base object, you can do a cube, cylinder, or sphere projection. So that's really gonna help you with your projections. Um, but I did a lot of the work for you here, so you don't have to worry about it if you happen to wanna to use this file. All right, we got all that out of the way. Now let me show you how to use these materials in Blender. So I mentioned the importer add-on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hover over here and I'm gonna click on the shading workspace. And that is gonna bring us to a view where we're using the real-time render engine to view the materials. And if you look over here, if you wanna check out how your view looks like in cycles, you can see that and you can see the cycles view, but I'm gonna leave that by itself. So first I wanna add my terrazzo material. So I'll go to file, import, grayscale gorilla material. Then navigate to wherever you saved your files and I'm gonna double click on terrazzo, import, then I'm gonna hit okay and okay. And then all you have to do is click this little drop down here or right over here, you can hit the drop down there and you can see the terrazzo material and he shows up in all of his glory. So there's two things I wanna show you about these materials that you might wanna do. One is add some surface imperfection, and two, how do we change the color of any material here? So changing the color is very, very easy. You'll see this node right here that's connected to the base color line. So all you'll need to do is hit Shift A, click Search, and get in a color ramp. So you just type in COL, plop it there, and you'll see now it's switched it over to black and white. So you can see the black portion is the majority. So we'll change that over to kind of an, an orangey red. And then here's a fun little trick. See this color bar? If you just hover over it, hit Control C. I'm gonna click here and hit Control V. It will paste that. And then I'm just gonna take it and slide it down. So I have kind of a monochromatic terrazzo material. Now, what about surface imperfection? We have this roughness right here. So I'm gonna hit control and right click and slice off the original roughness. And we're gonna add 
a new roughness. We're gonna use the crust surface imperfection here, just that's part of the free assets. So what you'll do here is hit Shift A and get an image texture. And then you'll go and plug in the mapping to it. And we'll talk about the mapping in just a second. And you'll go ahead and click open and navigate to wherever you saved your surface imperfections. I have mine right here and I'll just double click it and he's imported. And then let's go ahead and look at it as we plug the color into the roughness. And you'll notice now we have some nice imperfections and just like changing the base color of a color, if we wanna change the roughness, which roughness is indicated through bright and dark values, how glossy and rough it's going to be. So if we wanna change that, we can just go ahead and do the same thing. Shift A, search, get a color ramp. And then on the black portions, we can bring it up to make it a little less shiny and glossy. And on the white portions, we can bring it down to make it a little less rough. And now we have some nice surface imperfection. And that's also boosted by the bumping. So that's called that's from the normal map down here. If you bring your strength all the way down to zero, you can see it's just this perfectly smooth thing. Maybe zoom in right here. And then you bring that strength up and we have bump. So that's the nice thing about the add-on. It plugs everything in for you and they have these nice named nodes for you to look at and find and see. I'm gonna click on this model over here add the terrazzo, and then I'm also gonna click on this model here and add the terrazzo, but in this case, I'm actually gonna go ahead and change it to a blue. But if I go ahead and I click here and I change it to blue, it changes the blue on all of them. So to get a new material, you'll just see this little thing that indicates this is on three models. You'll click that and then you can retitle it to TB terrazzo blue. And then you can go ahead and change it to whatever color you want it to be. Now we have a nice blue terrazzo material. There we go. Now let's talk about materials that require displacement. So of course, to display something, you need uh, more dense uh, faces in your topology. And so if I click on this cylinder right here and I hit tab, this is the only one that's highly subdivided. All of these are much more optimized. So this one I subdivided for you to show. So he's all nice and subdivided, but that's still not enough faces for the uh, material we're gonna add to it to have like full crazy detail. So what you'll do is you'll click on the model, you'll go over here to the modifiers, add a modifier and type in sub, and you will get a subdivision surface modifier and you can bring your viewport levels to one or two. We'll just go to two just to just to have some fun. So there we go. Now he's nice and subdivided and ready for our plastic material. So I'm gonna go ahead and import that material. And then I'll hit the drop down and add in that new material. Now, node-based displacement is only viewable in cycles. So I'm gonna go up here and check it out in cycles, of course. Now, EV works with bump, which is why this material still looks really nice. Uh, but if we want full displacement, we'll swap over here to cycles just to double check if this is working. So what's really nice, again, with this add-on, it is going to optimize everything for you and plug everything in the way it needs to be. So you'll go down here to this height scale and just bring that up and you'll notice, okay, cool, it's working. We can see that it's working. We also in concordance with this normal map to get full detail as optimized as possible. And then the last thing, this is a subsurface material. And when using the add-on, it just plugs everything for you. So if you click on subsurface, you can see, okay, yes, subsurface is turned on. And then we also have this subsurface scale slider right here. The scale basically says, how much light are we letting in to this material? So that's all set up for you with this nice node. And then what I wanna do is tile this material a little bit. So I'm gonna go back to the uh, shader view, the real-time engine, and we can look at the mapping node. So if you ever wanna make changes to the texture, you have your location, you know, you have your rotation right here, your location, and you have, of course, your scale, and the scale's where you'll tile. So I'm just gonna click and drag and type three. That's kind of where I want it to be. It looks really nice, and then We've already done this, but I'm gonna go ahead and change the color as well. Now this material is nice and ready, it has displacement, it has subsurf, we changed the color and we tiled it. So now you have full control within the node editor. And if we go here and click on cycles, we can view, all right, looks like some of these uh, objects are populated with their materials, so it's looking nice and it's doing its thing. All right, there's one more material. I wanna show you how I use it just to really solidify this process. So let's go ahead and add in a wood material. So I'm gonna file, import and do that dance. So it's imported, you'll hit the drop down and add in the oak veneer. And then with this one, I do kind of want to scale it back a little bit. So I'm going to click and drag on my mapping, bring it back, 
and then we can add that to this one as well. And we are okay with it being a duplicate. It is a relatively different model. So I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly add a material to these and we will be finished. And this is the final set. And if we wanna look at this in our cycles view to see this finished scene, it is nice and populated with all of our models. Let's actually go to the full layout view. I'm gonna hit zero to see this full view. And here we have it, our finished scene with all of our beautiful materials. So there you go. That is how you use the materials from Grayscale Gorilla Plus inside of Blender to allow you to have full control and customize them even further. So hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned some fun stuff. Feel free to check out Grayscale Gorilla Plus. Everything is linked in the description, including the project file. See you guys later.